this is really highly prior, pr uh, proprietary. Um, there's some two uh, patent application which describes part of the protocol. Really, it's only parts of the protocol. Um, you can say, okay, all the unencrypted stuff, all the data which is transferred unencrypted within the protocol is, is uh, described in these patent applications. The rest, which is uh, somehow transported in an encrypted way, uh, that is completely undocumented. So um, it's kind of, uh, kind of, it's a heavy protocol. It's a, it's a really strange environment, a really complex environment. Um, what it does, it does all the message transports within this uh, domain service, wireless domain service uh, infrastructure. Everything you wanna, that is related to WDS is transported over uh, WLCCP. So you have a lot of different um, message types for different purposes, like um, the one is for transporting authentication data, like EAP. Other things are for transporting, um, let's say, uh, simple management tasks up to radio frequency measurement data and all that stuff. And um, basically we have about two uh, encapsulation modes for this um, because there are several packages which are only relevant within the local subnet. So within the local subnet, you just uh, encapsulate all the stuff into an Ethernet packet, send it out, that's okay. If you uh, need to go, if you need to have a further view of the network, you have to be IP based, so the second encapsulation is uh, UDP based uh, on port 2887. And um, what really helped uh, understanding, uh, I mean, parts of the protocol is that there's a, Wireshark parser, which covers at least some parts of that protocol. So uh, you can, it's a good starting point to dig into the protocol, but it's somehow, at some point, the support for that protocol stops, and then you're on your own, you re really have to look at the, the bytes and bits of the packets itself. What the... Uh, so the question is, uh, what kind of traffic is it? This is normally um, like, um, uh, I mean, this is, let's say, for example, if you have uh, for authentication data, your authentication server is somewhere located in your data center, then uh, you're not able to contact that uh, server through Ethernet ba encapsulated packets. So this is typically, typically the kind of data which uh, is IP uh, encapsulated and stuff like um, announcement, which is the current uh, WDS master in a, si in a network segment. This is typically encapsulated using Ethernet. So uh, it depends a little bit on what the message types are for. Um, what happens, uh, or what uh, is a great thing within that, everything is authenticated. Even in an access point that uh, is uh, providing wireless access to a mobile node is authenticated within the complete infrastructure before it can communicate, before, it, before a wireless client can use that access point, which is what we call um, the infrastructure authentication. This, is, and this will become a big part in what we're uh, just talking about. And the second thing is we have client authentication, which is just uh, 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 802.1x on uh, wireless, which is uh, somehow just transported uh, over WLCCP. Um, that's of also because there are somehow t uh, critical data, sensitive data like encryption keys, trans really transporting encryption keys over the network. That's of course some, you have requirements to confidentiality and to authentication, so there are some, there's some keying material which is uh, at first, uh, you don't see it, the so-called network session key the network session key is uh, derived by an EIP method called Le uh, LEAP. It's a Cisco protocol. And uh, afterwards, they establish a so-called context transfer key, which is uh, for additional, for they say higher encryption. We're coming back to this on a later. Um, so what the, the big idea behind all this is, uh, if you have an imagine an enterprise environment, you have of course, roaming because you have larger coverage area. 
and um, imagine something like a VoIP phone over wireless. You walk from one cover uh, the coverage area of uh, access point A to a coverage area of access point B. If you don't have any mechanism to really do a fast roaming, your wireless connection will drop, your call will drop, and you have somewhere between five and 10 seconds until you again re-authenticate it to the wireless network. That sucks, really, that sucks. So what they're trying to do is have a fast handoff. You can roam within less than 150 milliseconds uh, from one access point to the other one without your call dropping, for example. For that, um, they introduced something, a, a feature called central, uh, Cisco centralized key management. Um, on wireless networks, if when you encrypt, you have a so-called pairwise master key, and which, is which is the key that is used for encrypt uh, encrypting the wireless data. And to make it easy, they just said, okay, we modify a little bit on the concept how the key is derived. This is the CCKM, which is client-side feature. And um, on, the, on the back side, within our network, between the APs, we just cache that uh, authentication data, and we make it able to transport the, uh, the pairwise master keys from access point A, uh, which the mobile node is just leaving, to access point B. So access point B just reuses the, um, all the encryption data, uh, or all the keying material. That is the big idea, and this is how you can uh, really fasten up that roaming process very heavily. So, um, this is where I'll just get back to Eno. I mean, some of you might uh, vaguely remember uh, we already... Is there a mobile mic that we might have? Is there another one? So we don't have to switch this every time. I mean, there's not too many switches, but um, uh, again, some of you might remember we already at some point covered uh, WLCCP in, uh, in our Schmucon 2008 talk about layer two fuzzing. Uh, that is uh, the slide on WLCCP from the time. And at that point, we just fussed it and found out that somehow, uh, or we fussed some sub-protocols uh, as um, WLCCP requires a lot of state. Again, it's a very, very complex protocol. And at the time, we just had a very limited understanding of some types and the fastos and access points crashed. Um, and after Schmu, another German um, uh, security researcher contacted us and said, oh, well, let's, um, uh, I have done my own research on WLCCP. Let's uh, exchange our information. And it turned out he had some scapy scripts uh, reliably crashing APs. Uh, we initiated disclosure with Cisco on this um, later on and filed his in our findings. And uh, so WLCCP at the time was fixed uh, silently uh, after, say, on the implementation level. But what we are going to discuss today is uh, the protocol design level. Uh, and all this, um, say, uh, did not, uh, was not su suited to face our interest down. We, we had the idea like, oh, there must be more within this uh, protocol that might be interesting. Back on track, there's two particular, say, functions um, within WLCCP that are of interest for our talk. The first is um, WLCCP somehow assumes a hierarchy of the access points. Um, and within that hierarchy, uh, there is a uh, a so-called WLDS master that is elected. And this WLDS master serves as the point to uh, cache um, uh, cryptographic material to distribute it and stuff. So it serves a major role within the overall picture. A uh, second uh, piece that will be of interest for us is the intra-AP communication that, uh, again, is uh, authenticated by LEAP. As for the master election, that master election is simply based on a priority that can be configured uh, on the, uh, um, say, access point. So one of the access points usually becomes a WDS master. Uh, at the, once it um, becomes WDS master, usually it doesn't serve clients anymore, as um, all the CPU cycles are uh, reserved for 
uh, taking care of keys and this uh, kind of stuff. Um, but uh, this, uh, say, raised the question, wait, um, okay, the election is done based on the priority. Uh, what wasn't there um, a long time ago another Cisco protocol um, that uh, had the same uh, mimics uh, of electing some important point uh, by uh, priority and right? Uh, there was a protocol HSRP, and some of you might remember there have been uh, quite a number of attacks and attacks tools against HSRP. The most um, known one is Yadinia. Uh, and the question immediately is, uh, okay, what happens if another entity shows up that has a better priority? Depending on the priority election process, in some protocols it has to be higher, in others it has to be lower. In, in the case of WLCCP, it has to be higher. Uh, whenever um, we can inject a device that has a better priority, uh, it might, say, uh, push the uh, foreseen WDS master aside take over the role, which uh, might have the impact of uh, first uh, denial of service as uh, the role of the WDS master is no more performed uh, correctly or uh, in the future um, or subsequently, say, traffic redirection, like, uh, um, okay, forced traffic or some communication processes to go through the WDS master. Uh, we leave it up to you if this is good protocol design, say even in, um, I think, uh, uh, only was it 2002 when the patents were filed or 2003, something like there. Um, uh, even at the time, HSRP and the problems of HSRP were long, long known, so maybe it's not the best idea to uh, implement um, priority-based master election. There's a question in the back. Um, yeah, the question was, um, do you have an idea why they repeated uh, that mistake? Uh, my answer would be, um, to my perception, I've been working a lot in, in carrier space and in, say, window space. Uh, there are teams designing protocols. Uh, those teams do not necessarily communicate to each other. and. Um, it might even be, say, the team um, responsible for somehow designing WLCCP, they came, they came, had a wireless background. So engineers um, with wireless background, not too much focus on, say, IP or routing protocols, uh, so not equipped with uh, too much knowledge what happens in that IP space where uh, contrasted to their own uh, IEEE wireless engineer space. Uh, so maybe no exchange of um, information. That would be my um, uh, estimation why this uh, might have happened. Uh, stuff like this happens a lot in the, say, voice of IP space as well, where uh, telephony engineers with a telephony background uh, come into protocol design and they have no idea what happens in the IP space and what are uh, typical security flaws in the IP space. Maybe it was the same here. Uh, yeah, again, uh, Simple question, what happens if we take over the, uh, um, if there is a dev another device injecting maybe packets with a higher priority? And those of you who know the, uh, say, task distribution within uh, ENW can easily imagine it was Daniel's task uh, to code something like this. Uh, we have, um, we have a, a demo on this. Uh, I need this one. What you can see here is, uh, uh, one access point taking part, uh, taking part in the, this uh, overall WDS uh, structure, and that access, the WDS master in our case here is the one that has in the last octet uh, uh, dot ten. So, uh, I'll turn on debugging. Uh, for WLCCP packets, and Daniel, uh, can you see this or should we enlarge the font size, is that okay? Okay. Uh, he coded a small tool with the not so creative name WLCCP attack, 
which injects packets um, with a given priority, and once he starts injecting, 